Hey, friends. Ah, British TV. Back when it was still good. It's one of my favorite things to watch. So this time we're taking a look at a movie based on a British television series from the early 1970s. To wit, Doom Watch from 1972. Our story goes like this. A big oil spill has hit a small village on the coast of Scotland. They used some new detergents and cleansers to try to get rid of the oil at the time. And now, a year later, the Doom Watch organization sends this here investigator up to Scotland to gather a few samples for testing back at the lab to see how things worked out. But when he gets to this village, even before he can dip his crumpet in a spot of tea, or even get any crumpet, he finds all of the locals are kind of frosty and standoffish. They seem to resent his very presence. The only friend he manages to make is with the school teacher, who has only lived in the village for a short time. And something is definitely wrong. Many people are hidden away, and some are very aggressive. And his investigation takes a turn for the sinister, when our hero finds the body of a dead cat. What is the secret this village is hiding? Is there any connection to the oil spill? And what about this guy's hairdo anyway? Doom Watch was a television series with sci-fi overtones, not unlike the X-Files in a way. It was co-created by Kit Pedler, one of the writers for Doctor Who. He invented the Cyberman. Of the 38 episodes, only 24 still exist. This is because the BBC wiped out their archive in order to recycle the videotapes the programs were stored on. The same fate befell episodes of Doctor Who and other classic shows before someone finally smartened up and stopped the dumbassery. In the show, this team of intrepid investigators is led by this guy's amazing hairpiece. The team's real name was the Department for the Observation and Measurement of Scientific Work, and their job was to investigate uh, scientific work, both public and private, that may be harmful to mankind. The team is euphemistically and somewhat derisively called Doom Watch, even by the team members themselves. This team would investigate something to do with science or pollution and try to put a stop to the short-sighted bad guys crapping up the world. Along the way, they ran into roadblocks put up not just by the polluters and corporations, but by their own government as well. There is one cool episode you can find on YouTube called The Plastic Eaters in which a virus has been designed to eat plastic. So you could get rid of plastic waste. Sounds good, right? But this thing gets out aboard a passenger plane and gobbles up all the plastic on the plane and it crashes. Later, we see the same thing happening again. Plastics turning into goo and dissolving. It's pretty scary. Whoever posted this used AI to enhance the picture. So ironically, in a story about plastic, everyone's hair looks like it was made out of plastic too. <laughs> it's a good story though. As for this movie, while some of the regulars put in an appearance, they were not the stars of this picture. They were relegated to playing supporting roles in the movie version of their own show. That's gotta suck. In our cast, we have Ian Bannon as the lead investigator from Doom Watch. He was in a lot of stuff. Flight of the Phoenix, Waking Ned Divine, Hope and Glory, he was even in Braveheart. We also have Judy Geeson as the schoolteacher love interest. Uh, I always thought her name was pronounced Geeson, but she says it's 
Jason, and she's Judy Jason, so she ought to know. She was a kind of a scream queen. A lot of what I've seen her in involves her screaming. <laughs> I know her best from, you guessed it, an episode of Space 1999. She fired a laser gun at a lamp in that one. <laughs> Among many other things, she also starred with John Wayne in Brannigan. We also have the legendary George Sanders as an admiral. He doesn't have too much to do, but he's here. Kino Lorber put this out on Blu-ray, and that has an interview with Jason and an introduction by the director, Peter Sadsty. The only downside is that the film looks super grainy, depending on whether the scene is at night or in low light or whatnot. I have this somewhere on DVD, but I don't remember if it has the same problem. Knowing Kino Lorber, I'm willing to bet the problem is due to the kind of cheap film stock the production used, and not Kino's processing the Blu-ray. It's not a deal breaker, but the grain is heavy and noticeable. I enjoyed this one. It's very much a product of its time, very British. The drama is very shouty, as it was on British TV at the time. Some of the sets, like the Doomwatch Lab, are obviously of the made-for-TV variety, and they look cheap. But everything shot on location which is the majority of the production, like 90% of it, all looks really good. While the story is set in Scotland, the movie was actually shot on the coast of Cornwall, and it has a reality that I really liked. There have been a few attempts at revisiting or resurrecting Doom Watch, such as Doom Watch Winter Angel, a TV movie from 1999. But as for now, Nothing more seems to be on the horizon. I do wish I could get hold of the DVD of the surviving episodes of the show itself in Region 1, where I live. Haven't found it, though. If, like me, you enjoy these British shows and films, Doomwatch is definitely a movie to check out. Bannon is quite good, as are the location footage and the mystery surrounding the Islanders' affliction. The movie really gives you the feel of the show, too, at least the kind of stories they were doing. The show and the movie still speak to problems we face even today. So I'm giving Doom Watch, the movie, two and a half paws up. Definitely worth checking out. You take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.